From about 1980 on, my father would go to the Quetico National Park in Ontario, Canada every year to go fishing. And he was a pretty organized person, wasn't he? <laughs> he was a very organized person. And in fact, one day we were over visiting mom and dad and we went into the office for something and saw his list as he was preparing for his next fishing trip. Yeah. <laughs> and he would break it down into categories. In my backpack, I have this. In my suitcase, I have this. And he even got it down to, in my right pocket, I will carry this, and in my left pocket, I will <laughs> And it kind of became a running joke with us. It was. Going out to the store. Well, in my right pocket, I have my keys, and it's like that Adam Sandler sketch. The reason we bring that up is because we got a really nice comment on one of our videos, and Lauren wants to tell you about it. I'm Matt. I'm Lauren. We, we are, are YAH, YAH Adventures. Adventures. If you enjoy going on adventures with us and want to do us a solid, give us a big old thumbs up and share this video. We'd also really appreciate it if you click that big red subscribe button. And if you click that bell, you'll get notifications whenever we go on new adventures. Now back to the show. Yes, a uh, big shout out to Felicia. Felicia and her husband are headed to Egypt next month and she asked us to do a video about long haul flights. Well, something we know about, a little bit about long haul flights. She had been on many of them before I met her. My first long haul flight to Australia. Mm -hmm from Los Angeles. Long haul flights can be anywhere from six to 18 hours. You are probably wondering what I am wearing. <laughs> <laughs> I came across a fellow traveler a few months ago. She told me she wore a fishing vest when she had small children to make sure she could get everything she needed into the vest because everything wouldn't fit in the carry-on. And airlines are getting very picky about the weight of your carry-on, mm -hmm. the size of your carry-on. Yes. Some people just travel with a carry-on. And she told me now, in her international travel, she wears a vest. And I thought I would try that out. And you know what? It's pretty cool because I can wear this on the plane, wear it checking into the flight, and it doesn't count as any extra luggage. Tell us what you have in your pockets then. In my pockets, I will have, <laughs> in no particular order, <laughs> these are things that will be great for your flight. Keeping in mind that airlines like Norwegian, for instance, require a limit on the weight of your bags, they're not going to weigh you if you're wearing this, they're just going to weigh your bag. So everything in here will add weight to that bag. That's why this is exactly really a killer and idea. This isn't super heavy, but every little ounce counts, believe me. We've been there. <laughs> in my pocket, I will have Kleenex. Kleenex is very important to have on a flight in case you get the sniffles and you need to blow your nose. I like to have my own personal Kleenex rather than using the Kleenex on the plane. Yep. So that's in that pocket. In this pocket, I will have gum. <laughs> gum is good to unclog your ears if you're landing or if you just want to have some fresh breath during the flight. So a pack of gum is good to have in your pocket. And down here, I think I have antibacterial wipes. And this will come in handy. A lot of people will use them to wipe down the seat front of, in front of them, the tray, maybe the where you arm rests that you put your arms on. So this is good to just wipe down the area around you when you get on the plane and also after you eat or if go to the bathroom. Remember on the air, airplane, hundreds of people are using the bathroom. Yes. So it's always a good idea <laughs> to sanitize everything. Yes. Uh, also, you can uh, take hand sanitizer as well. And that was in this pocket down below. Mm -hmm. And I think I even have a toothbrush and toothpaste. So after you eat or snack, you can brush your teeth or before you land, especially on a long flight. Right on. That's in that pocket. What do we have over in this pocket? <laughs> I love this thing. It has so many pockets. It's crazy. I think we have in this pocket a snack. Look at that, healthy snacks. I have healthy almonds in this <laughs> pocket. Uh, airplane food sometimes isn't the greatest and sometimes they charge for you to have a meal. Yes. And a lot of times we don't like to eat on flights too much because the food is salty. <laughs> She's <laughs> losing her food. tissues. I didn't put them away correctly, sorry. <laughs> so sometimes the food can be really salty and and full of preservatives so if you bring your own snacks you probably feel a lot better 
at the end of the flight. And I think in this pocket, oh, I have, uh, it's kind of like airborne. I think this is the generic, but it's an immune support where you drop it in your water and drink it. We use this a lot and it really does help. You know, we don't get sick too often on flights. And when I don't bring this uh, immune support or the sanitizing, if I forget, then I sometimes do catch a bug. It's good to start using that oh two three days before a flight. Oh, wow. I, mm -hmm. I also recommend a good multivitamin. Now I use eye caps. This is what my doctor recommended for my eyes. If you remember the last video, I have some eye issues, but this has everything in it. I, I won't go over the list. But if you can see, just look at all the vitamins it has. A lot of vitamins. Yes. So, but you you pick the vitamin that you like best, of course. In addition to multivitamins, make sure you pack your prescription medications in your carry on. And you might want to leave the cats at home. Okay, this just came out of this lower pocket here. Aloe Moist Cream. And it's uh, this is a travel size and it's really nice. Here's a big So it's non-greasy and it's uh, hypoallergenic. Yes. And it's a really wonderful cream and you can find out more about it. We'll put a link down below. Yes. And they give you these travel sizes and you can keep refilling the travel size from the big size. Absolutely. And I yeah. have that for Oops. my hands. It, this is an all body cream, so you can use it for your hands, for your face. It's wonderful. I said the dirty word, absolutely, but <laughs> ding, <laughs> one on me. Ding. <laughs> and I still have pockets free. She has a wonderful list of things to do in preparation for a long haul flight. I think what we're going to do is type these up and put them in a blog on our website and we'll put a link to that blog down below. One of the number one things about flying internationally in long haul flights, and I used to do this and I don't do it anymore. I used to take my shoes off and a lot of people do and it can get quite smelly. But you can't stop other people from taking their shoes off. Uh, and if you want to take your shoes off, by all means do. But just remember, uh, when you're up in the air, sometimes your feet will swell. And if you take your shoes off and then you land, the swelling doesn't go down for maybe one or two hours, and you might not be able to get your shoes back on. That has happened to me. <laughs> so it's good to have sensible, comfortable shoes too. Mm -hmm. Or shoes that you know you can probably get back on or pack an extra pair of shoes that are a little bit bigger if you want to take your shoes off. Half a bottle of water. Sometimes the airlines charge for water. Norwegian Airlines charges for water. So have a bottle or two of water. And of course that can add weight to your carry-on. You might be able to fit it in a pocket in your vest even if you can. Have a good pillow or neck brace. And Matt's going to demonstrate this one. This is wonderful. It's originally designed for people with some C-spine issues, your cervical spine. It helps expand your neck and realign. It's just a little thing that goes around here. We got some Velcro straps here. You got this lovely thing. Uh, is it open? Yeah, you got this lovely thing here. Tighten this up so it doesn't leak air out. And then you look kind of goofy and people stare at you, but then when you're sleeping comfortably, without getting a neck crick and they're trying to find a comfortable way to sit, they become extremely jealous. It's really <laughs> wonderful. It's funny, the last flight we were on, I started blowing my pillow up and someone thought I was taking my blood pressure. <laughs> I said, don't worry, it's just a pillow. Matt turned me on to this so, uh, several years ago and I thought, oh, I don't know, it looks weird and I did it on the flight and people did stare at me, so they will, but you know what? I had the best night's sleep. Now I, we each have one and a backup. <laughs> I feel like Chris Farley and Tommy Boy here. <laughs> this <off>. Great. <laughs> one thing we always do when we're planning our trip, before we go on the trip, is we try to make sure we have either an exit row or bulkhead seating. Now some of you don't want to sit in an exit row. We can understand that. And if you don't want to sit in an exit row, then go for the bulkhead seating. <laughs> One drawback to the bulkhead seating is you don't have a seat in front of you, so you don't have a seat to slide your personal belongings under. Some people don't like that. I don't mind. I'll just squeeze my personal belonging in there next to my carry-on. And you really don't have your personal belongings for just about 20 to 30 minutes because as soon as you get up in the air, you can open up the bin overhead and pull out your belongings. And what I do is I pull out my carry-on bag, put it in front of me, and I get to prop my legs up. And it's amazing because there's nobody in front of you. And it's perfectly acceptable to do that. 
But if you decide you want the window seat, it can get cold by the window. Mm -hmm. Bring a blanket or a coat that you can cover up with by the window. Some airlines do charge you to have a blanket. Another good seat tip that we always do, if you are two people traveling, make sure you book the aisle and window and leave the middle free because the middle seats are the last to go. And if it's not a full flight, then you will have a seat in between you. And this has happened to us many, many times. Just where... happened to us on the way home from uh, London. Right, yeah. exactly. We had the middle seat free where all the other seats are packed in. Because if you do a window and a middle to be together, then someone will take that aisle, guaranteed. If you do an aisle and a middle to be together, someone's gonna take the window, guaranteed. We do the window and the aisle, or if we're in the middle, and it's a 3-3-3 three, three, three configuration, we'll do an aisle and an aisle to have the middle free. So then you're saying, well, what if somebody takes the middle seat? I won't be with my loved one. Guess what? You're gonna say to the person coming on the plane, they're going, oh, I'm in that middle seat there. And you look up and you say, well, it's your lucky day. <laughs> we do this a lot. And they love it. They're happy. You've made a happy person because they're not in the middle anymore. And either Matt will move over or I'll move over. Then we're together. And then the person who was in the middle is happy because they either have a window or an aisle seat. Another trick we sometimes do is instead of booking a window and an aisle, we'll book two aisles across from each other. That way we're close together, but neither one of us has to crawl over somebody else to get up if we have to use the bathroom. Mm -hmm. And that's important to us. Now some people that's not important, but I like to get up and walk around and so I don't have to ask somebody to move or disturb their sleep to do that. And as long as we've been married, we don't have to sit right next to each other all the time on the airplane. So. No. <laughs> We're together a lot. A lot, yes. <laughs> and that's why we do solo trips sometimes. Uh, we need our space and we don't mind not sitting together on airplanes. Right on. During the flight, it's really important to get up and walk around. You want to get the blood moving, uh, do some stretches, and learn a few little yoga stretches before you go. Don't sit in the seat the entire time. It can cause uh, health risks. So you want to make sure you get up and walk around. And you want to make sure you have some good headphones. <clears throat> These are my headphones. They're noise-canceling headphones. She bought me an early Valentine gift, see? I got him new ones because he's, his are broken. Yeah, <laughs> like, I'm rough on them. I'm having a hard time hearing you right now, so we'll take this headphone off. <laughs> <laughs> they do have in-flight entertainment. They will bring you the little earbuds, but the noise on the plane, there have been times I've had trouble hearing the, the movie because uh, the little earbuds don't block all the noise. So good noise-canceling headphones. Very good for you. Also blocks crying babies. Yes. <laughs> Also, make sure you have a pen in one of your pockets or in your carry-on in case you want to maybe do a crossword puzzle in the in-flight magazine. And also because when you get to a lot of countries, you have to fill out an immigration form. And a lot of times they will have that immigration form for you on the plane and they'll pass it out for you ahead of time. And you will save time going through customs and immigration if you have it filled out in advance and you're not searching for a pen when you get off of the airplane. In your carry-on, it's always a good idea to have an extra pair of underwear and clothing in case your luggage does get lost, you'll have a change of clothes. Before you zip up that carry-on, make sure you check out our video about the five essentials for the carry-on for international travel. Link is in the description below. So when you get to your destination, you may have been flying all night, but it's 11 o'clock in the morning, and maybe you didn't sleep on the plane, and you're tired, and you're jet lagged. It has happened to me, it has happened to Matt. My suggestion for that is you can get to your accommodations and take a short nap, maybe an hour or two. Don't take it any longer than that because you're gonna not get on the time of the country you're in and not be able to enjoy yourself as soon as possible. Or you stay up all the way until it's time to go to bed, maybe eight or nine o'clock at night and then get a good full night's sleep. Yeah. Either one of those is good. I've found later on in life that the nap is more preferable for me. I've okay. done it where I've, we've gotten off the plane, mm -hmm. hit the ground running, seen sights, gone and eaten, go, go, go. We get back to our room at night and we're tired and we go to sleep. But now I'm finding that that one to two hour nap is a really good energizer. Yeah. And we, we enjoy going out and, and hitting the pavement a little more after the nap. Recalibrate you just a little bit. One thing I did one time when I was younger, someone said, take a sleeping pill. 
<laughs> when you get on the flight or just like 30 minutes before you get on the flight and then you'll sleep the whole flight over there well I don't take sleeping pills so I did that and it had the opposite effect on me I could not sleep I was wired so if you don't know how drugs affect you then just stay away from them. <laughs> mm, that's interesting. If you have any other questions, you can always reach out to us at Matt at and Lauren, Lauren at, at yaadventures.com. And here's the rest of it. You can always go to Facebook and follow us at Yah Adventures, Y-A-H Adventures. Or you can go to Instagram and follow us at Matt and Lauren. Also, be sure to visit our website, which is yahadventures.com. Thank, Thank you. you for watching. See you soon. Get that done before we start. Hey, where are you? We're rolling. I know we're rolling. <laughs> <laughs> so from about 1980 on. You started everything so, and you said it really fast. I don't think you can get rid of it off of there. So my father. So. <laughs> so tell us what. I said so again. <laughs> no. So. No so. <laughs> so a needle point thread. <laughs> she has this wonderful list here of things to do and prepare her. Prepare her. Prepare her. Can learn name from box. Okay. And make sure you have a pen. I do have a pen in one of these pockets. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs>